coming to lie down on your back and, and just getting comfortable. And it might mean that you um, roll up the blanket and place it underneath your knees. You might place that blanket under your head, a little pillow. Right. If you want to lie down with your legs extended long, you can do that. Or you might consider um, taking a constructive breast pose this evening, especially if your low back feels a little bit iffy. This is a nice way to really neutralize the curves of the spine, just allowing the knees to point up. Oh, hey, everybody, you just filtered in. Good to see you. We're going to get started on our backs, and you can turn on your music right away. <laughs> okay, so, just taking a couple of moments to settle yourself down and in. Good. Lying down on your back, noticing your breath. <laughs> noticing the effects of your day on your physical body. And the effects of the day on your mental space. And I had a hard time coming up with a theme this evening and I went for a walk and I was like, oh, good winter, bony bear. It's time <laughs> for a little bit of that. I feel like we have an obligatory bony bear class every winter. <laughs> so this is this year's. All right, so allowing your shoulders to be at ease. Take notice of them specifically. You might decide to pick your shoulders up and set them back down and even rearrange the position of your arms so that your shoulders feel really good. And just allow your breath to come and go. Allow your breath to be as big or as small as it is. No need to rush or manipulate, taking deeper breaths. And we'll settle in here for maybe another 10 breaths or so. With these breaths, see if you can just loosen yourself from expectation. Maybe giving yourself this next hour to just let it flow, right? Let whatever comes up, comes up. Maybe your reason for practicing this evening will present itself like three quarters of the way through class. <laughs> And no agenda, just being here with yourself. Mm, good, last breath or two here. And then when you feel good and ready, just lift yourself up into a really easygoing bridge pose. Your arms alongside you, your pelvis picks up. Press into those feet, lift the spine. And really notice your glutes working, the backs of your thighs engaged. And then notice the middle of your back engaged. Good. Go ahead and roll the spine back down really, really slowly. Okay, go as slow as you can. See if you can get each vertebra to touch the ground by itself. Good. Once your pelvis settles down, extend the legs out long, extend the arms out past your head and take a big stretch. And notice your lower belly here. 
Good, slide your heels over to the right. You can cross one of your ankles over to the other. Good. Your upper body might stay centered or you could scoot it over to the right as well and find a whole lot of space through the left side body. Good, just a few more breaths here. All right, and then slide yourself back through the center. And as you get there, just bring the knees into the chest. And maybe you're taking a little rock from side to side in your lower back. Maybe you're holding still. Good, and a few options for the legs. You can take them at 90 degrees, knees above the hips, ankles straight out from the knees, or you could extend one or maybe both of your legs out long. And we're just gonna lift the upper body a tiny little bit. So lifting the shoulders away from the floor, knees bent, legs straight, doesn't matter. Just breathe here. And maybe two more breaths, warming yourself up. Good, and then from here, just slide those heels along the ground and then over to the left. And we'll take our banana pose the other way. So upper body centered, maybe you're scooting the shoulders over. And really noticing the right hip, side of the rib cage. Mm, good. Another handful of breaths. Mm, nice. And then bring yourself back through to the center. Let's take the soles of the feet down to the floor and give ourselves our nice low belly rub. <laughs> so your knees will rock from side to side and your hands can just kind of press into the area around your pelvis. So right into the low belly, into um, the top of your hip bone, around your lower back maybe. And just a few moments here to bring some awareness, a little light touch to the low belly. <sighs> Good. And then bringing yourself back through to center, there are a couple of options. If you're craving another bridge pose, you can lift yourself up there. If you like doing that bit of core strengthening, lifting your upper body and your legs, that's an option too. Eventually though, we'll all wrap along the length of the spine and come through into a child's pose. So just take all the time you need. Right? As strong as you wanna be, as relaxed as you wanna be, Maybe like a minute to get there. And eventually making your way into your child's pose. You might decide to take a blanket underneath your knees for a little bit of comfort. Knees can be closed, they can be wide. Good, extend your arms out nice and long in your child's pose. Good. Right. And as you find the child's pose, wrap your head side to side. And then walk your hands on over to the right, finding some space through the left side of your body. Good. 
Good. Walk your hands back through to the center and on over to the other side. Good. A deep breath in and out. And then come back through to the center. And let's just take it back into a downward facing dog. So as you feel ready, just lift your hips on up and back. Take a big stretch. Let the head drop way down in your downward facing dog. And maybe you stick your tongue out here, release your jaw a little bit. And your head so heavy. And extend your right leg up and back behind you. And then your right foot will come through in between your hands at the top of the mat. It might be nice to have your blanket down here because we're gonna set our left knee down. Good, and just take a couple of moments to ease into that left hip. Good, can keep your hands down on blocks maybe. Or if you want to, you're welcome to walk your hands back a little bit. Okay. Eventually, we'll all come into this low lunge with our hands on blocks kind of next to our hips. Good, and raise that left arm up, reach it high. And then up and over, stretching it to the right. Your right hand is down on the block. Good, and we're gonna sweep it back into a runner's stretch. So sit your hips back towards your heel. Maybe you're sitting all the way back. Good, and folding over that right leg. Good, another couple breaths. Right, and start to walk your hands back out to the top of the mat. Step back, downward facing dog. Good, and you can choose to hang here in your down dog or you can move through a vinyasa if you would like. Good, rolling through that little flow. And eventually meeting back in your downward facing dog. Good, we'll lift that left leg up and back behind and step the left foot in between your hands at the top of your mat. Your right knee settles down. Good, just finding that low lunge. And maybe you're walking your hands back on the blocks Kind of standing up tall here. And eventually both of your hands will be on blocks. <laughs> really think about lifting the chest and then take that right arm up and just tip over to the left a little bit. Good, finding some space through that, that right hip. Good, set the right hand down, shift those hips back, take your runner stretch. And settling in here for a good five breaths or so. Good, one more good breath here. All right, and then start to walk your hands back out to the top of the mat. Step it on back, downward facing dog. 
Good. And then if you want to roll into your high plank, go for it. Good. Lowering yourself down. Inhale, lift up the heart. Exhale back to downward facing dog. And here in downward facing dog, let the head drop down. Take one big breath. Good. As you inhale, look in between the hands and then exhale to walk those feet on up to the top of the mat and just find a nice standing forward fold, which you'll hold on to for a few breaths. So you might decide to take your hands onto your blocks. Or maybe you want to interlace your hands behind your back and press your knuckles up. Good. Or maybe your knees are soft, your arms are heavy. And then slow as you can go, start to kind of roll yourself up. Good. As slowly as you can go and and then reach your arms up nice and high. Take a big stretch. Exhale, hands together at the heart. And standing here for a moment, feel your feet on the floor. And inhale, reach those arms up and overhead, a little baby back bend, and fold yourself forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms down, step back to high plank. Yeah, the side plank over to the right, so dropping your heels, maybe picking up that left hand. Think about picking up your right hip. Let's come on back, high plank pose, and then move through your flow, maybe finding child's pose, maybe taking your chaturanga. Your favorite series of movements here. <sighs> nice. <sighs> mm, take a big breath in. Nice breath out. Good. As you inhale, look in between the hands. And exhale to walk or step or hop up to the top of your mat. Breathe and lift halfway when you get there. Exhale, forward fold. Good. Wiggle those shoulders around. Maybe turn the head side to side a little bit. Relieving some of the weirdness that might have built up today. Yeah. And then slow as you can go, rolling yourself all the way up to standing. Circle those arms nice and high. Take a look up, maybe a tiny back bend. Exhale, hands together at the heart. Hold steady here. And really feel your feet on the ground. Good, inhale, reach those arms up and overhead. Exhale, dive forward over two long legs. Yep, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, step back, high plank. And then a little side plank action over to the left this time. So dropping your heels off to the left, maybe that right hand lifts up. But think about most of the support and stability coming from your left hip and the left side of your rib cage. Yeah, those muscles that wrap around. When you're done, bring yourself back through to the center into your high plank and then just find your flow, whatever it looks like tonight. Maybe it's rest. Maybe it's all the movement. <laughs> hmm. Finding your way back into your downward facing dog. And I was thinking of maybe just a couple minutes of time to move in your own way. So like a free flow moment. <laughs> maybe you're taking your standard sun salutes. 
Maybe you like to hop back to a chaturanga. Maybe you want to spend the next like two to three minutes hanging out in down dog or child's pose. Yeah, and you're always welcome to throw in poses that you want to take. <laughs> so like whatever makes sense in your body. Nice. Yeah, this is great. And maybe right now you're craving that structure, that routine of your sun salutes, or maybe you want to melt into a puddle on the floor. <laughs> what do you need? Nice. And just allowing yourself to move in the way that makes the most sense to you. And as you're doing that, really trying to stay with yourself. You're not letting your mind wander off right now. <laughs> See if you can keep it here. And that's really like the hidden <laughs> goodness of this practice. It's the way to train our bodies for sure, but also to train our mind. You need to keep it from its busy busyness and wanderings. <laughs> Just about halfway through while you're flowing. <laughs> and taking your time. Nice. Beautiful, everyone. And maybe just about another minute or so <laughs> for those of you taking stronger poses on sides. <laughs> nice. Mm, beautiful. And eventually, I'll know you're done when you all kind of meet in a standing forward fold at the top of your mat. How does that sound? <laughs> Maybe one of those. Good, and in that standing forward fold, let's turn it this into like a real Uttanasana. So thinking about engaging the kneecaps, kind of lifting them up, firming up the fronts of your thighs. Good, picking up your toes, spreading them, setting them back down. Nice, and then allow your chest to come in towards your thighs, your head to drop down. <laughs> Good, a deep breath in and a big breath out. And then you're gonna slowly roll yourself all the way up to a standing camel pose with your hands on your lower back. Your head might drop back if that works for your neck. Good, broadening across those collarbones. And you know how in our side planks, we really lift it up from the hip. We want to lift up from right in between the shoulder blades here. Good, keeping our mid back safe. Good, and then exhale and slowly fold yourself forward again, hands towards the floor. And you'll step back into downward facing dog. And if you want to take a quick vinyasa here, you're welcome to do so to keep the movement going. Or if you want to hang in down dog for the next four or five breaths, feel free. Nice. As you find your way back into downward facing dog, just extend that right leg up and back behind you. Open up through the hip here. And you're gonna kind of drift those right toes down towards the ground. You might flip the dog, you might not. Uh, but just thinking about finding some space for that right hip and supporting with the left side of your body. Nice. And eventually we'll all make our way up into a high lunge. So taking your time, stepping that right foot in between your hands at the top of the mat. Once you find that high lunge, let's reach those arms up and overhead here. And then take that right hand down onto the right knee and tip the left, ooh, the left fingertips up and over to the right. 
So finding that little bit of like a side body stretch. Good, and then we're gonna sweep those left fingertips along the ground towards the left foot, and then drop that left hand down, reach your right hand up for Skandasana. Yeah, so that right leg is long, <laughs> the left knee is bent. Nice. All right, we're gonna come into a standing wide angle Taking that right hand over towards the left foot, the left arm reaches up. And then just let yourself rest in the center for a second. Drop the head down. And inhale, halfway lift. And then come all the way up. We're gonna turn the heels in, point the toes out, and just kind of sit down into this tall goddess squat here. And straight through those legs. Kind of spin that uh, left heel back a little bit. Right toes will point forward. Slide the right hand down the right leg triangle. You might take your left hand to your lower back, your belly, side of the rib cage for a little bit of self massage. Or maybe you want to set the arm up or even out past the head. Good. Go ahead and take both hands down to the ground, step it back, downward facing dog. And your choice of movements here, maybe taking your chaturanga. Maybe none of that. <sighs> Rest, strength, whatever you need. <sighs> Wonderful. Right, so from here, extend that left leg up and back behind you, open up through the hip, point your knee high. Maybe you're thinking about moving those left toes down towards the ground behind you. Maybe they move a millimeter, maybe they touch the ground. Using the right side body to lift you. And then when you're ready, come on back around, step that left foot in between your hands and take your high lunge here. Nice. Good, and once you find that high lunge, the arms come on up. <sighs> I just feel really like upright here. <sighs> and the left hand will come down onto the top of the left thigh, tip over, that right hand reaches up towards the left. Good. A few more breaths like that. And then take those right fingertips and kind of sweep them along the floor until the right hand comes down back towards the right foot. Left leg is long, send that left arm up. Good, and then let's find our wide angle with the left hand reaching for the right foot, the right arm reaches up. And let yourself drop down here in the center, head is heavy. You might decide to interlace your fingers behind your back, press your knuckles up. Maybe you're tugging at the hair on the top of your head, through the nape of your neck, a little scalp release. Good, and then very slowly lift yourself up halfway. And then lift yourself up all the way. We'll turn our heels in, point our toes out, and just come to sit down in your goddess. And we all have differently shaped hips. We all have different pelvises. So this is gonna look different for everybody, but just try to find something that feels right. Okay, like you're working. <sighs> 
but you're balanced. Good, and then go ahead and straighten out both of your legs. Turn your right heel back towards the edge of the mat and slide the left hand down the left leg. Your right hand might massage your rib cage, especially those lower ribs maybe. Maybe your hand is kind of reaching for the hip or the lower back, up overhead, out long. Good, go ahead and set that right hand down and step it on back, take your downward facing dog. And then find your flow through. Nice. I think I'm finally seeing you guys in real time. I hope you can hear me okay. <laughs> Cool. All right, as you inhale, raise your right leg up and back behind you. Good, and then go ahead and step that right foot in between your hands at the top of the mat and sweep it back into reverse warrior. I think I just said reverse warrior, whoops. <laughs> I meant warrior, <laughs> they're very similar. So finding that reverse warrior, really reach the right arm up and over. And sort of deepen that bend in your right knee so that you can feel that opening through the right hip. Good, and then we're gonna find an extended side angle. The right forearm comes down into the right thigh, left arm out past the head. And think about keeping that space through the right side of your waist. Yeah, good. Notice your feet on the ground. And the turn of your rib cage. And then we're going to take those left fingertips back down to the ground, sweep them along the floor, bend the left knee deeply, straighten through that right leg and reach the right arm up. And then that right arm might wrap behind your back. Good. And maybe you're sliding that left forearm underneath the left thigh, just for a moment. And as you come on out of this, find that standing wide angle fold. Let your head drop way down. Good. And then slowly start to walk your hands around towards the right foot. We're going to hop that left foot in just a bit for a pyramid pose. So you might use blocks under your hands. You might try to take a bind here, wrapping both of your arms around both of your legs, finding balance. Good, a big breath in and out. And then from your pyramid pose, just begin to lift your chest, take your hands together at your heart and softly bend that right knee. Let's bring the left knee in towards the chest. And a little twist here, right hand on the left knee, left arm reaches back. Good, come back through to the center, drop that left foot down, reach both arms up and overhead. And then we're gonna slowly move down into a toe squat. So coming up onto your toes, <laughs> take the hands down to the heart, bend the knees, Move kind of slow if possible. And maybe you're setting your knees down on your blocks. <sighs> Taking this very uncomfortable pose. <laughs> okay, just hold yourself here for a second. Try to breathe. Mm, good, and then go ahead and fold yourself forward over two long legs. Inhale, halfway lift. 
exhale, plant your palms down and just find your flow through. Nice. Beautiful, everyone. Maybe a lion's breath. <laughs> A little something to soften the jaw, sticking your tongue out. Good, as you breathe in, extend your left leg up and back behind you. And then step that left foot in between your hands, finding your reverse warrior. Yep, good. Oh, gorgeous, everyone. All right, so notice a couple of angles here. Your knee. <laughs> And you notice the space between the left hip and the lower left ribs. And then let's find our extended side angle, dropping that left forearm down onto the left thigh, right arm reaches up and over. Good, a breath or two here. And then let's take those right fingertips and sweep them along the floor, deeply bending that left knee. Extend your left leg long. We'll reach the left arm up. And maybe wrap that left arm back and around you. If you want a little added balance challenge, you might pick up the right hand, maybe even bring that uh, right forearm underneath the right shin. Or bind if you've got it. And then go ahead and release yourself, standing wide angle fold. Let the head be nice and heavy. <sighs> Good, and keep walking those hands back around to the top of the mat, framing your left foot. Let's hop that left foot in a little bit. And just find your pyramid shape. <laughs> Make sure you have a broad enough base so you feel steady. Good. Feet might be like a foot apart, width wise. Another couple breaths. Right, and very slowly start to lift yourself up about halfway, hands to the heart, bend that left knee a little bit, and then we're just going to take that right knee up into the chest, standing up on the left leg. Good, left hand onto the right knee, and take your twist, right arm reaches back, look anywhere you need to. Good, and then come back through to the center. Slowly set that right foot back down. Inhale, raise those arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, plant your palms. Take it back and through your flow. Good, big breath. <laughs> As you inhale, extend your right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, step the right foot in between your hands at the top of the mat. You're gonna come back into pyramid pose here. So hop your left foot in just about halfway. And we'll keep the halfway lift in the spine here too. So hands might come onto blocks, if that's helpful. Just thinking about really pressing down through your feet, pressing out through your crown and back through your tail. And then find a little softness with that. 
Mm, you might decide to take a revolve triangle pose, reaching your right hand up, your left hand stays down. Mm, yeah, another breath or two. Okay, both hands come onto the blocks again. Let's step that left foot forward. We're gonna find our toe squat, keeping our knees high. And then we'll just walk our hands around to the left. Maybe the blocks come too. Really, this is just about finding a twist. So it might mean that your uh, right elbow is pressing into your right inner knee. Maybe it's pressing into your left outer knee. And so holding this twist, and if you like to take a side pro practice, it's up to you. <laughs> maybe you want to float the feet off the floor, maybe not. <sighs> but eventually we're going to come back through to the center, and we're just going to kind of sit down on our butts, and you might fall on your butt. <laughs> we'll set the feet up, and we'll take a little bit of a boat pose. <sighs> And then we'll very slowly lower ourselves down with some amount of control, press into the feet, lift the hips, take a bridge. Good, just a couple breaths. And then slowly roll the spine back down, knees to chest, rock along the length of the spine. And come back and through your flow. Maybe you're stepping back to down dog. Maybe you're sitting up and sipping tea for a minute. <laughs> Maybe you're bringing your hands down and hopping back to chaturanga or high plank, flowing through. And just taking a few moments to move in the way that you need to. Eventually, we'll all be back in down dog. And from down dog, extend your left leg up and back behind you. And we're going to take the left foot forward, right foot hops in a bit to find your pyramid. And keep that halfway lift. Yeah, so maybe your hands are on the blocks or up on your shin or ankle. Good, feel the strength in your legs, feel the strength through your spine. And then soften around it as you find your revolved triangle, that left arm reaches up. Maybe it comes to the low back. Good, another breath or two here. And then let's take that left hand back down. We're gonna step the right foot forward, lift up onto your toes, and come on down into your toe squat. So your knees will be up high. And then just walk your hands around to the right, pressing that right, or sorry, the left elbow into your outer right knee, or maybe your inner left knee. Notice your sense of steadiness or shakiness, and what your breath is doing. Maybe you like to take a side throw, maybe not. Anything will do. Mm, good, and then let's come back through to the center. We're gonna bring the knees down to the ground. And just kind of kick the tops of the feet. <laughs> Give them a good little kick on the ground. Wake up those toes again. And then let's sit back onto the ankles. So we're kind of taking an ankle stretch here, like a yin style ankle stretch. All right, you can sit just back on your heels if that works. If you want to, you might slide something under your knees, like rolled up blanket or a couple of blocks. 
or you might even float your knees up if that's in your practice and you'd like to go there. And some stretching the tops of the feet. And maybe two or three more breaths. Mm, nice. And then let's come on out of this. We'll take the hands back down to the ground. Tuck the toes underneath. Standing forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step them back into your high plank pose. We're gonna spend a lot of time chilling out. <laughs> this might be the last hard thing you do. <laughs> so maybe you wanna consider lowering down really, 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 really slowly, if that's your jam. <laughs> you might also just wanna make immediate contact with the ground and I get it. Okay, but when you hit the ground, when you get there, Really get there. Anyway, make, make the ground and yourself kind of indiscernible. You turn your head to one side or the other. And soften your eyes and your jaw and your tongue. And soften your ears. <laughs> Good. If your hands are clenched, let them relax a little bit. And same thing with your glutes. Really feeling the back of your body rising and falling here. Without any need to change things, just notice which direction your heels are pointing. <laughs> How you've chosen to organize your physical body for comfort. Yeah. I want to offer up a little bit of time for backbending practice. Um, and this is a little different for everybody. So this evening you might prefer like a sphinx pose with your elbows under your shoulders, taking that passive kind of back bend from your belly. Yeah, maybe you wanna take a locust pose, <laughs> lifting yourself up, your arms alongside you, your big toes coming together. Maybe you wanna do a little like floor swimming, <laughs> moving your arms and your legs in some kind of way that feels like kind of challenging, freeing, whatever. <laughs> And there's also bow pose, reaching back for your feet with your hands and then feeling the soles of your feet lift towards the ceiling. Good. I feel like backbending practice is really kind of important in the winter <laughs> for a multitude of reasons, um, physical, mental, energetic. So taking time to maybe come in and out of a few um, different back bends. Mm, noticing the strength of the back of your body, movability, the front of your body. Go ahead. Mm. And when you think that you are done back bending, <laughs> you can just make your way into a child's pose, taking all the time you need. And it might be child's, it might be puppy pose with your hips above your knees, your arms out long if you really love that one. <laughs> and another thought is like a yin style extended child's pose, where you have your elbows on some blocks. And you fold at the elbows and have your hands resting at the back of your head or your upper back. Mm. 
Good. Eventually, we'll all come to sit up, <laughs> sitting up on our on our butts, <laughs> and we'll extend the legs out in front of us. Good. It might feel nice to sit up on a thing or two. It might be nice to wrap yourself up in a blanket too. And we're just going to take some basic forward folds here. So with your legs out long in front, let's just lift the arms up and overhead and kind of create this L shape with our body. Good. As you're ready, fold yourself forward over your legs. And maybe your hands rest on some blocks. Maybe let your back round and your knees soften a bit. Good, breathing deeply into the back plane of the body. Good, maybe another five breaths in your fold here. Hmm, nice, slowly. Bring yourself back up into your seated position, sit up tall. And then we're just gonna roll down onto our backs. <laughs> All right, maybe you're doing it with some, with some effort. Maybe you're just settling down. And as you find your back, bring your knees, point them up. Let's scoot the hips over to the left, drop the knees off to the right, and take your supine twist. Nice. And from the side of your twist, come back through to the center and just make your way over into the other side of the twist. <laughs> the other side might look completely different. Mm, wonderful. Another breath here. Mm, all right. And then bring yourself back through to the center where you might be ready for Shavasana. If you're somebody who likes to um, invert like a shoulder stand or legs up the wall, or if you enjoy um, like a wheel pose with your hands on either side of your shoulders and just pressing yourself up like an upside down view. <laughs> That's a thought. Or really anything else that you like to do to close out your practice. Hmm, just picking your very favorite thing. And giving yourself a little time and space to wiggle in the way that you need to 
so that you can find some stillness in Shavasana. And knowing that even in this physical stillness, there's still this like buzz beneath the surface. There's this energy that we all carry around of breath and life. And just giving yourself a little bit of time to observe that underlying buzz of life energy that you've got there. Allow your breath to regain a little bit of depth here if it became shallow. And find a little bit more ease around the edges with that bigger breath. and allow your body to move in the small ways at first, but then in slightly bigger ways. Maybe taking a big stretch, rolling over to your side. Good. And eventually we'll all come up into a seated position unless you're cool where you are. <laughs> And you might decide to just kind of hang out in Shavasana for a while longer. Hmm, good. Once you're ready, just sit up, just bring yourself there. Hmm, hi everyone. <laughs> we'll let's take our hands onto our hearts and just give it a little rub, a little side to side kind of light massage. You know it's in there. <laughs> mm. 
Right, and then bring your hands into the center. Just drop your head down, taking a moment to honor your practice and to honor the people that you're also practicing with. Oh, thanks for coming tonight, everybody.